So, uh, please welcome to the webinar of Idea Statica. Uh, today, we will do a part of our concrete uh, portfolio, specifically, specifically uh, about the application Idea Statica detail. Uh, and the topic is uh, design and code check of a pylon and uh, indirectly supported corbel. Uh, at first, let me uh, say something uh, about uh, the tool which we use. Uh, as you may see on your right side of the screen, there is a control panel uh, where you can switch the audio if you need. And uh, mainly, there is a place to ask your questions. So please feel free to ask any. We will try to uh, answer them during the webinar and also we can go through them at the end uh, and if we don't have the time to go th through all of them don't worry we will answer them by email so who will present today uh, it's uh, myself my name is Philip Adler I'm a product engineer at Idea Statica and uh, also uh, I have uh, one more colleague here today with me uh, his name is Lukáš Jošíček and he's also a product engineer as me. So, uh, something about the examples which we will do today. And the first example is uh, an airport, airport terminal pylon in Madrid. Uh, of course, uh, the structure is much older than our new application, but uh, this is an example which we did for uh, one of the engineers who wanted to see uh, such a check of uh, a check of such structure and uh, this is what we will go through as you can see we will obtain some results and the second example will be indirectly supported corbel made by my colleague so let me uh, switch to the application now and I will start with the first example so in Idea Statica, we just run detail application and start a new project here. Uh, at first, I came into the wizard, which uh, tries to uh, make my input quicker or more quick. And uh, there, I only need to select the default concrete grade from the library. Let's say I want to stick uh, to the default grade C30 on 37 and as well the default settings for a reinforcement, but you know there is a whole library according to the Eurocode now. And of course default concrete cover 30 is uh, working for me, but I can type anything. Of course these values can vary with, uh, within all the items in the project. So uh, these templates, which you can see here on the left side, they aim to speed up the process of input. So there are some of them now, more will come with next versions. But uh, in my example, I would like to show you the general input as I will use a reference by DXF file. So I click on the general input and uh, I uh, land it in a geometry tab. It's the first one where you need to define the geometry itself. At first, I will click on import DXF, which will run uh, the dialog for selecting of the selection of the DXF file, this one. And you can see some lines which I have in DXF. Uh, as you can see that they are the lines, not the polylines. So when I select one of them, it's just like this. Uh, if I had the polyline, the whole outline would be selected at once. Now I need to run the consecutive button, which will find connected lines. And when I click on the outline here, you can see that uh, this geometry will be uh, imported. So now I click OK, and you can see the shape here. Uh, let me just switch to a 3D view because uh, there is an important thing. My DXF file is a 2D DXF file, which we can import now, and I need uh, the information about the thickness of the model. So let me change it to one meter like this. Okay, so that's the shape itself, and the software 
already gives me a warning that uh, the structure is, as of now, uh, statically or determinated. So I need to input some boundary conditions, like supports. So to do that, I will add a new entity. And uh, I have uh, many varieties or possibilities in, from supports, so I can uh, place some point supports, line support, I can hang the model, or I can even hang it by the reinforcement bar itself, called patch support. And in this case, I will use line supports, uh, which will be on uh, edge number 13 and edge number three, like this. Uh, now it is, uh, you know, a uh, hinged one, but uh, acts just in compression. I will deny this option, and I will also restrain uh, the rotation, you know. And uh, I will copy it to the edge number 13. So, now you can see there is no warning on the left side of, of the software itself. Okay. Uh, the last thing which I need to define in geometry is uh, is the bearing plate because uh, I will load this model by the reaction from let's say the roof, you know, the snow and so on. And uh, to distribute this point load of the reaction, I will use a bearing plate, which is here in load transfer devices, the first one. Now I need to specify the dimensions. So it will be half meter wide and three centimeters thick. And so also now I have it on the wrong edge. So I will switch the edge to number 10, like this, and move it slightly from uh, the beginning of the edge by, I think it will be 12 and a half centimeter, like this. And of course, the same as I did for a line support, I will copy it to the edge number six. So I will just change the edge number. And now I, I have uh, defined everything what I needed in uh, geometry. So let me continue with uh, defining definition of, uh, of the load effects. Uh, I can specify more old cases here, some for permanent, some for uh, variable load cases, even uh, combinations. I will leave that part for either uh, my colleague or our tutorials. So please feel free to go through our resource center examples. So let me just stay with one load case for permanent load cases uh, or permanent effects. And let me input just two point loads here and I will try to do some non-symmetrical uh, design, so uh, there will be much bigger reaction from the left side than from the right side. So let's say like this, it will be a compressive force, and uh, I don't need to, or I want to incline it a little bit, so now I will incline it by 22 degrees, as you can see. Of course, I will copy that, make it on a bearing plate number two, uh, change the inclination and also the value will be one-fifth of original value like this. So we expect this one to push the whole model to the right side. Um, okay, uh, we have a geometry and loads. We will proceed to the reinforcement and uh, there I landed in uh, design tools tab which uh, can guide us uh, when we don't know how to reinforce uh, specifically this shape of structure. I have never done this, let's say, or assume. So there are two possibilities. First one is uh, linear analysis, which is very simple, very uh, quick. And so uh, there you can see, I will apply some filter. Uh, you can see the most compressed parts uh, and the, the parts where is uh, the biggest tension. So you have the, a, a clue uh, where should I put the most of the reinforcement and its direction. Or I can use uh, another approach. It's uh, topology optimization, which is based on an energetic uh, principle uh, where you can see the most stiff uh, or stiffest structure uh, for the given 
effective volume of the concrete in, in this detail. Uh, so now you can see again the red parts are where the most compressed parts are and uh, of course the blue ones are for attention. So uh, if I want to see these results while I input some reinforcement, now I just can switch to input and you can see they are uh, underlined here with uh, some brighter colors. Uh, and uh, I will specify some some reinforcement from scratch here uh, by adding a first entity, which will be a group of bars. You can see that we have some predefined things for, let's say, openings and so on, uh, which we'll not use in this example. So, group of bars. Uh, basically, now you can see if my uh, design complies so with the results or not. And to, for you to see it better, I will switch off the topology optimization results. Uh, and I want to explain how to reinforce uh, such a detail. At first, I want to input this reinforcement on the edge number eight. So I will switch the edge. Uh, and I want two layers and the distance between them should be 100 millimeters like this. And of course, when I switch to 3D view, now you can see that I have three reinforcement uh, bars in a layer and a diameter of 20. So I will place there diameter number 18 and number of bars in layer to six, like this. And the last thing which I want to do is to elongate this, this uh, item. So to do that, we have this tool here, position on edge. The first one is the whole length on the given edge. So you see as this edge number eight ends, uh, the other ends as well. So I want to extend and uh, it asks me if I want to extend the beginning or the end. Uh, and for me, uh, the, the hint to know where the beginning and where the end is, is this orange arrow. It actually shows from the beginning to an end. So when I now, extend the end, the left part should extend. And if I select beginning, the part, uh, right part should extend like this. Okay, uh, this was a definition by uh, out outline or opening. And when I uh, input uh, another group of bars, which uh, we will do a little bit different because we want to apply it on two edges actually. So let me just switch the definition to on more edges. And you see that number of edges has uh, have uh, appeared and I need to select the right uh, numbers. So edge number nine and edge number one with the space between them. Now you see the result, it's very, very nicely shown. You can, you can understand this surely and I want to extend the last edge. It means the last in this list. Uh, so I want it to be two and a half meter long from this intersection. So when I click on this checkbox, I can input the value like this. And of course, uh, I can show you how to copy the reinforcement. It's the same as I did for bearing plates or supports. So I have selected uh, GB2 item, copy. I will switch uh, the edges from seven to number one. And of course I need to change the, uh, the direction like this. Now I could, uh, you know, uh, continue to reinforce the detail uh, to, to speed up this uh, demonstration. Uh, I will show you that I can create a template because let's say next time I want to face the very similar um, detail with this shape, so I can create a template. Let's say pylon. And uh, actually I have done one uh, before, so uh, let me show you how I can work like this when I have the blank project again and I face the same design. I click on apply and you can see that my previously done or uh, the prepared one is uh, available for selection. So now you can see that I have here many more, so and, and they are exactly the same as we did, right? 
Um, okay, so we re reinforced the detail. Of course, there should be some more, you know, rebars and so on, but uh, it's not necessary from the ULS point of view. Uh, and you will see some cracks uh, uh, for this given uh, load if I do not uh, input it. So uh, in the last tab, or uh, call the check, I will run the nonlinear analysis in, in by this button. And now you can see the runs, all the iterations of the nonlinear analysis, and you can see the results here. Uh, everything is green, everything satisfied, and we will go through all of these uh, results detailly in a minute. Let me just explain uh, this, this picture. We call it a stress flow. Uh, very easily by this legend, you can see that the, uh, the red color in the concrete represents the uh, level of the stress in a, in a concrete in compression, right? So the darker the color, the higher the compression. Uh, of course, uh, the blue for the tension in a reinforcement, uh, basically the thickness of the line represents the force and the color, uh, the darker color means the higher stress. Uh, once it uh, reached the yield point in the reinforcement, you could see this hatch. It's, it's not uh, present in this example but I can show it on uh, this hatch, this yellow one, and it represents uh, almost or most used parts of the rebars in, uh, in one model between uh, reinforcement and concrete, which is basically, or I'd say most uh, common uh, use is in, uh, at the ends of, of rebars. Of course, uh, when we have uh, the uh, reinforcement in compression, it will be with uh, the purple, uh, drawn with purple color, like this. Okay, um, so now as for detailed uh, results, at first let me switch to a strength tab, uh, at, and this is for concrete, so there is a map of utilization uh, uh, of stresses in the detail, and I can see also the principal stresses results like this, uh, or the principal strains. So please remember this one, there is a big tension in this pylon or the left part, uh, and also the directions of principal stresses and the KC factor map, uh, which you can see the correlate with uh, the tensile strain map and I'll try to explain what the KC factor is when I switch to materials and models. Uh, then you can see the blue line or blue diagram which we obtain from the code which is recommended uh, and we actually decrease it by this KC factor and we use this red diagram which is sometimes or usually uh, the identical with uh, the blue one but once we uh, obtain some tension here, uh, then we need to apply the compressive strength reduction factor, KC2. So this one, this map is basically shown, basically shows how much we reduced the compressive strength in uh, each part of the structure. Here we go to a, a half of compressive uh, resistance. Of course, these were the results for a concrete. Now I will switch to reinforcement and I can show you, let's say, the stress along the uh, rebars. I, I can see it for for each each item in the, in the, in the model. So you can see how it goes from the tension to uh, compression and the same in a strain, right? It's not an issue. Then we have the results for the bone model on the Anchorage tab, where we can see also some utilizations. Uh, these are the Anchorage forces, uh, because uh, I have uh, input that um, the continuous bar here, and you can see the value of the force, which I need to anchor it later in the following parts of the pylon. Uh, and for instance, the same as you have uh, seen for the stresses, you can see the forces in the rebar. And the last one is the bone stress itself. 
uh, as of now, the 8.2 version does not contain SLS checks. They will uh, come with a 9.0 version in uh, April. Uh, but still we deliver, we have this auxiliary tab which has two things. First one is so-called tensile strains, which shows the places with excessive tensile strain. Of course, you can see I have many parts with uh, inadmissible crack widths, but please remember these values are for uh, ultimate limit state combination or load case. So it's, it's cracked pretty much, but uh, that's not the relevant value for the check for SLS. But of course, I can see, let's say, the deformation from this ULS state, uh, and I can see it from all these uh, partial results, or I can review the deformed shape if the model behaves as I want. Uh, okay. These are the results, and so now we will have a look at some outputs. First one is a bill of material, which is basically to sum up all the information about the model uh, or about the reinforcement used in this model. So basically some tables and uh, detailed reinforcement bar tables with the shapes. And uh, these shapes and let's say this kind of view uh, can be exported into the exe file since version 9.0. So maybe another heads up about what is coming. Uh, and the second possibility to output, uh, as you may guess, is uh, to have the report. Uh, so there is a brief report, which is basically just one A4 sheet with uh, just, you know, the checks, everything satisfies, this is how it look, and so on. And mostly use the detailed report. Uh, let me just include some project data so you can see it like this. I can include some project name, project number, author, and so on. Uh, I can uh, see here all the materials and characteristic used in the model, the geometry, loads, uh, some basic scheme of reinforcement, and all these checks which we went through right now, and also the bill of material like this. It can be saved, printed, previewed, anything like this. So, uh, this was everything from my side, and now I will give the presenter to my colleague. Lukash, who will show you this example of indirectly supported corbel. So, Lukash, you have the word. Okay, thank you, Philip. So, I hope that uh, you can see my screen. Okay, and just a minute. Okay, <clears throat> so uh, let's jump in uh, to the next part of the webinar. Uh, this detail uh, will be interesting uh, predominantly for uh, prefabricators <clears throat> and, and for uh, prefabricated structures. Uh, it is uh, indirectly uh, supported corbel. Uh, let me uh, introduce or meet to you something briefly uh, with a theory. <clears throat> this type of uh, structure we can divide uh, to, according to length, uh, to short and uh, long. Uh, due to the fact of localization, for uh, it's placed to the bottom part of the beams. And uh, according to types, uh, how you can see, uh, we can divide uh, this detail uh, for non-symmetrical or symmetrical corbel, indirectly supported corbel. Uh, you can see that uh, there is some some analogy with uh, with the frame corners, uh, but uh, in this detail are subjected uh, internal edges in the tension. The internal edges are in the uh, in in the tension. So uh, let's uh, jump in. I will go through uh, our application. So you can see this is application detail. I will start uh, in the same way like my colleague. I will create a new project where uh, I have set a concrete grade, the class of the reinforcement, and uh, general cover of the whole detail. 
from the predefined templates, uh, I will use uh, the last possibility like a general as the general input. Okay. So uh, in the general input, uh, we have options what uh, we can do. Uh, we can do a wall or 1D member, uh, 1D member form. Uh, our purpose of uh, demonstration, uh, it's a better way to use uh, wall where I will set the width on one meter, high on one meter, and uh, the thickness of uh, this detail will be 0 0.4 meter. Okay, you can see this is some type of the volume. And uh, what I will do, I need to create uh, my uh, request shape. So I will create a new model and uh, I can do the opening. The opening here has been created uh, opening and uh, what I need to do, I need to only uh, change the dimension like a width on 0 0.4 meter and the high 0 0.6 meter. So uh, how I can operate uh, with this uh, with this hole? I need to uh, precisely uh, precisely placed uh, this opening to the edge free. So uh, I can make uh, or I can control uh, this option. What I uh, what I did with the master and insert point. Uh, insert point. Uh, the master point uh, is placed on the structure of the wall, so it will be number three. And insert point, it's a point uh, in the corner of the opening of the opening. It will be number three as well. Okay. Now you can see um, I got uh, my shape of uh, the detail and I will continue with the supports. So, um, okay, uh, from the supports, uh, you can see we, we have options what uh, we can, uh, what, we, what we can select. But for this detail where, if I will switch over to my presentation, so you can see that uh, the supports or uh, the behavior or not behavior, but uh, this uh, this detail is uh, in the mid span of this uh, single uh, single uh, single span beam. Yes, so the supports uh, aren't uh, aren't uh, um, how to say uh, aren't uh, determined. So for this state. Uh, our development team developed this type of the supports, like a patch supports. Yes, uh, this type of the supports uh, transfer the force, like a reaction, to the reinforcement which is uh, in the surroundings of effective radius of this support. So, I will uh, use uh, to to, to control or to place this separate, I will use uh, coordinates X and Z direction. So uh, I will insert the, the supports nearby the corner or the point seven. So the X position will be zero point or 40 millimeters uh, in the global Z direction. And uh, Z position will be uh, zero point or 40 millimeters, 40 millimeters down, but the master point will be set on number seven. Uh, I assume that these supports uh, will be in the midline of uh, of the reinforcement, which will be delivered uh, in the next uh, in the next steps. Okay. <clears throat> yes. So. Now you can see that the program automatically want to ask that structure is still over uh, determinated. So I need to input uh, another another support. So I will I will use for that uh, copy operation and change. I will change only the master point on the number four. 
now uh, I have two hinges or two supports and uh, left side supports uh, will support will be released in X direction now you can see we have uh, statically determinated structure and uh, we can continue to the adding to the adding of the load transfer devices um, where will be applied the, uh, the reactions uh, from the beam okay now you can see uh, the width of the bearing plate is uh, 20 centimeters the thickness 20 millimeters and what I need to do I need to input uh, the bearing plate uh, to the uh, nearby the uh, H5 so uh, I will do it and now uh, I only input the offset from the number six about uh, 0 0.1 meter Now you can see uh, our geometry has been done and uh, we can proceed to the loads. Oh, here uh, was some non-conformities or, or some warnings that uh, there is no reinforcement reference to patch or support load in the model, but uh, the reinforcement will be delivered in this flap uh, reinforcement. So uh, this warning uh, will be uh, disappeared. Okay. So now I will continue uh, with the addition of the loads. Uh, now you can see the first load case is automatically generated and the type of the load case is uh, permanent. What uh, I need to do or what I will do in this load case, I will input the reaction from the beam, like from the self weight, for instance. So here you can see we have a load impulse uh, which, in, which is introduced by the point loads, line loads or surface loads. So I will use a point load. Uh, the value bill, uh, of the reaction will be 80 kilonewton, and I add one more point load, which will be in horizontal horizontal direction, in uh, global direction Z, and uh, I set the value on 16. 16 kilonewton in the global direction x now i am satisfied uh, with the permanent loads or permanent load case and i will create a new load case which will be not permanent but variable uh, the variable loads um, is uh, introduced for instance uh, from the snow from the snow or some uh, some another load so uh, the reaction from the variable loads uh, will have value 30 kilonewton in a global in global direction z and uh, it's all now <coughs> um, i would like I would like to check uh, this detail uh, with, uh, or I would like to have some combination from these both load cases. So I will create one nonlinear combination where you can see a rule for the combination. This is LC1 plus LC2, but I would like to make some pressure factors here. So I can add some pressure factors using this button for permanent loads it will be 1.35 and for variable 1.5 okay now i'm satisfied and i would like to check only this one nonlinear combination so i can switch off these two load cases to speed up the calculation okay right now uh I can go through the reinforcement, but uh, I don't know where input the reinforcement. Uh, for this case, uh, we have developed two tools. The first one is uh, very well known like a linear analysis where 
if I'll scale um, the megapascal uh, or some compression fields, you can see uh, the shape of the compression fields and uh, where uh, are at tensile areas. For a more clearly way, uh, we have developed another design tools, uh, which uh, we named we named topology optimization, which is based on uh, strain energy principle, and uh, this uh, this tool is finding out the most effective shape uh, due to the applied loads, uh, which is based on the effective, uh, not based, but uh, due to the effective effective volume of uh, structure. The effective volume here. I have a 20%, for 40% I will have another, this is uh, better to see where, uh, where, is, uh, where are a compression fields and uh, tensile areas. Okay, uh, great, so I can let uh, to, I, um, to I knew uh, where input the reinforcement, I can let this uh, highlights uh, switching on or turn on and I will switch over to the mode reinforcement where I will start with uh, my request uh, reinforcement. At the first step uh, I would like to cover this tensile areas. Uh, for that I will I will use a stirrups uh, which will be uh, in this in this way around these uh, edges. If I will click on the button plus, uh, you can see uh, the reinforcement type uh, which we have predefined to. Uh, I will start uh, with a group of bars and, and I mentioned that uh, I would like to make stirrups uh, and the stirrups will be anchored uh, in this compression compression area. So at first I need to define the bar shape. Uh, the bar shape uh, will be on from these possibilities on more edges. Here you can see the program uh, automatically uh, give you advice uh, of the edges where or, or where input the reinforcement uh, due to these edges. So I will start, you need to input uh, subsequently the edges due to, uh, due to the anchoring, uh, anchorage type, yes, uh, be right? Because uh, I would like to make this anchorage type uh, here, so I need to uh, keep I need to keep uh, the order of the edges. So at first I will start with a number 4, 1, 6 and 3 and here you can see if I will change the anchorage type at the beginning and anchorage type at the end on a standard, standard hook you can see what happened. This anchorage type is placed in nearby this support. What uh, I need to do, I would like to have the diameter of a stirrups number, uh, diameter 10 millimeters and six bars in a layer. If I will switch off uh, the topology optimization, go through the 3D rendering of the reinforcement, you can see how does it look like, okay? Uh, now I will switch, uh, switch over to the 2D model and uh, I will perform only copy of this operation, uh, switch on a topology optimization and now I would like to cover these tensile areas. Yes, so I will input the stirrups uh, around these edges. So I will order the edges uh, in this, uh, in this um, row, I will start with a number 5, 4, 1 and 2. You can see I have created uh, a 6 or, or 
uh, the stirrups with diameter 10 and six bars in a row. It was uh, really fast. I made only a copy and changed uh, the edges. Uh, now, uh, I assume that uh, here is a, a huge concentration of attention and the cracks can appear. So, um, the best way how to uh, prevent this situation, uh, I will insert here some incline bar, um, which uh, will protect this detail uh, due to fact that can here appear some inadmissible cracks. Okay, I will add a new reinforcement, uh, like uh, inclined reinforcement bar and uh, the diameter of the bar will be set on the 10 millimeters, six, uh, six, num uh, six bars in a lawyer. And uh, I would like to have uh, to, to the reinforcement uh, where elongated along the uh, for, or for the maximum length for that, I will use this entity uh, or this item full length bar and here I need to only uh, define some anchorage type at the beginning and uh, at the end uh, of a bar. Okay, now <clears throat> I will define here a standard hook and uh, the end will be only basic anchorage. I will change uh, the angle, angle of the bar on the 55 uh, degree. And uh, what I have forgotten for that, I have mentioned that these supports uh, are transferring the forces from these reactions to the reinforcement. So I will come back to the group of bars one and I need to switch on this uh, this checkbox. You can see what happened. The radius can uh, appeared, and now we have done with the reinforcement. I can go through the check and run the non-linear analysis. Okay, it will be a really fast process because there is only one nonlinear combination and you can see uh, what happened. The program automatically detected uh, the weakest part of a structure. It was the reinforcement where this pattern from this legend um, give to, uh, um, gives to us the advice that uh, the utilization of this rebar is over 95%. Okay, but everything uh, is clear, everything uh, was uh, fulfilled, the, the checks, I think, in the summary overview here. And uh, what I would like to show you, uh, because uh, the explanation performed my colleague Philip, so I will show you some overall check. This is a map. Uh, which um, give you a hint where or which 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 uh, uh, parts of the structure or uh, how uh, how are the structure how is the structure utilized okay and uh, the reactions uh, which will go through the reinforcement from these supports okay here. Uh, you can see a uh, principal tensile, uh, principal tension, principal stress or principal compression in this in this detail, KC factor which reduces the compressive strength in the concrete. I will I will uh, go through the reinforcement where I will show you yeah, on the incline bar the utilization or the ratio between the stress and limit strain. Uh, uh, sorry, strain uh, to limit strain. This is uh, stress to limit stress and uh, many more. Uh, this was mentioned 
in the previous in the previous example so i will very quickly go through this uh, this step and show you only only uh, the utilization or the shape of the bond for instance and deformation of a structure some excessive tensile strain uh, on this detail on this detail and I will I can go through immediately uh, through the detailed report where oh, where you can see uh, materials some geometry reinforcement overall check of the structure stress flow and detailed results uh, which uh, has appeared in the check flap okay so it's all from my side and thank you for attention and I will give a presenter to uh, to my colleague Philip Thank you, Lukash. So uh, now you have, pardon. Uh, how do I stop that? <laughs> so I have seen something from our office. And uh, so we have a place for your questions. Uh, OK, so there has not been so many, so feel free to type some. We have still some a few minutes left and uh, there was a question uh, we define a thickness of an element and we also define the number of bars in one bar layer uh, but in the results we have only 2d maps of stresses strains etc so which bar of the layer is taken into account uh, the answer is pretty simple but i think we forgot to mention that uh, the detail application works with uh, a 2d model and uh, of, of the concrete and uh, thus we use the area of the reinforcement of in, in each layer uh, thus we represent also these results for the layer you know and uh, the 3d position of, of the rebars in the layer are used for the calculation of embedment of, of each rebar so um, now we see that some of you are typing that we have uh, many. Uh, the applications are many, which I do not fully understand, but uh, if I understand it correctly, you mean that there are more applications which can do uh, detail analysis or design, but they use uh, strat and time method and they are limited uh, just, to, just to ULS checks and use some other simplifications. Uh, and uh, the last one so far is why you put up support to the corbel instead in the bottom part so maybe Lukash can you comment it was your example okay so I can comment if you give me a presenter so I will show I will show the presentation uh, you can see that uh, in the middle of span the supports uh, aren't here yes so uh, you can't uh, only input uh, the support to the bottom part uh, you need to hang this uh, uh, this detail uh, to the top or uh, to the on the reinforcement like uh, i did yes because there is a the supports are a represent of the bending of the bending stiffness of the beam yes uh, the supper the supports uh, aren't involved on the button side so this is the reason and from the strata uh, if you how I mentioned you need to uh, come out from the global behavior of, uh, of this detail or, or of this structure or beam so uh, you need to input the supports uh, here Yes, this is the this is the answer I think. So, okay, 
Yes, there was the answer in the questions. Uh, thanks, you have to simulate the longitudinal rebar. Great. So uh, that's for this question. Uh, okay, so uh, I think we have come to the end of this webinar. So uh, after this webinar, um, there will be a, a questionnaire. Uh, it will take you some about uh, 30 seconds. Uh, is a feedback for us what to improve or not. Uh, maybe some of your wishes to, to see on the next webinars. And the recording of this webinar will be uh, sent to you uh, within three uh, days. But just remember there is a weekend <laughs> coming, so I think till the Wednesday. It will be also on our, our YouTube channel, so please feel to subscribe. And uh, if you are not the user of Ideastetica, you can apply for our trial on the given website. It's also uh, on our homepage on the right side. So feel free to use and, and try it on your own. Uh, some next, next things which do not forget. Uh, it's our resource center also on our web pages where you can find uh, some uh, tutorials for our applications, uh, some some verification articles and so on. Uh, there are also the full lists of recordings of the webinars and also uh, there are scheduled webinars. The next one is on February the 27th, uh, which will be, I think, about the steel connections. And uh, that's all what we wanted to tell you. Uh, so have a nice weekend.